This deals with Z distributions and how we find the area under the curve using Z distributions and Z transformations. Let's start out with, let's assume for the sake of argument that we've got a mean of 100. So remember mean mu, the mean mu, so this is a population mean of 100, and that we've got a standard deviation of, let's say, 15. Standard deviation of 15. And then let me go ahead and sketch out a crude normal distribution. And that didn't come out so well, so let me fix this a little bit. So pretend that this is a normal distribution. So we have our bell-shaped curve, right? And we know that the middle of this, right there, will be equivalent to 100, which is our mean. And one way we can think about this is that we can think about this first row right here. Let's make that 100 a bit darker there. So we can think about this as this contains various values of x. And we know that the sum of all x is divided by the number of x's. So x, the sum of xi divided by n, gives us the mean 100, right? And what else do we know? So we could also think of this mean in terms of a z-score. So we have a mean of 100, which would also, in terms of a z-score, is in the middle of the distribution. So that would be a zero. Let me put that there, right? And let me go ahead and darken this a bit more. Right? Got that. There we go. So we know that the standard deviation is 15. And let's think about what this could be a measure of. So let's say that this is a uh, measure. Let's think of it in terms of height. So we've got height, right? And just for the sake of argument, the mean of this population is 100 centimeters. And maybe it's a population of hobbits, right? Or halflings, if you prefer the more modern term. So, And the standard deviation is 15 centimeters. So 100 centimeters is the mean height of halflings. And 15 centimeters is the uh, standard deviation. We know that if we go about one standard deviation below, we are then at 85, right? And that gives us a negative 1 on the z-score. So 85 centimeters. And then 15 centimeters below that would put us at about 70 centimeters. And that would correspond to two standard deviations below the mean, right? So how am I getting this? So the way I'm getting this is I have 100. And if I go one standard deviation below, that means that I would subtract one standard deviation. So 100 minus one standard deviation is 15. So 100 minus 15 gives us 85. Two standard deviations below the mean would just be 100 minus two standard deviations, or 100 minus the quantity of 2 times 15. So that gives us 70. And 55 would give us uh, centimeters, gives us three standard deviations below the mean. And we know that by 100 minus the quantity of 3 times 15 is 45. So 100 minus 45, so 100 minus 45 gives us 55, right? Now, if we go one standard deviation above the mean, that puts us at 115. So in that case, we're at plus 1 z. So 100 plus 15 gives us 115. Two 
2 times 15 gives us 30, so 100 plus 30 gives us 130. And then for 145, that's plus 3. So 3 times 15 is 45. 45 plus 100 gives us 145, right? And then we know that these correspond to various areas under the curve. So that we know that these z-scores tell us how much area is under the curve. We know that between negative 1 and positive 1, we know that that area from there to there, right? Can't really see that very well. Is that better? Yeah. So that that covers, so from there to there, to that interval covers 68.26% or 0.6826. of the area under the curve, right? So. For the area underneath this curve, 68.26 of it is found between negative 1 and positive 1 on the z's table. And so remember, we find these ultimately from looking at something called the z table, which Different books will show in different ways. If you're in my class, we're using a textbook in which the z-table begins at negative infinity. So that would be over here. So it, it actually it tells us the area under the curve from the z-score to ne negative infinity. So there's the z-score. Negative infinity continues off in this direction. And if we flip the z-table over, we still have negative infinity over here, but now... It includes everything from the area under the curve. It assumes that you've already, well, it deals with all positive values of z. So from a positive value of z to negative infinity. And it can help us find that area under the curve. We have this. Let's imagine this is for the height of halflings. And what do we know? Or what do we want to find out? Let's say that we want to find, let's say that if for our particular observation is equal to, let's say, 120 centimeters, what is the corresponding z value? So what is the corresponding z value? How would we find this? The way we would find this is by using the z transformation. As I was saying, we need then to figure out how to convert 120 into a z-score. We've got this observation, so 120 centimeters. We've got a halfling that's 120 centimeters tall. And we want to know what is the corresponding z-value. The way we would do this is we would break out this nifty formula. So general form looks like this. This is, you can think of that as the difference from the mean. And that could be a positive difference, meaning it would be over here so that actually this number is bigger than the mean, or it could be a negative difference, which means that this number is smaller than the mean, right? And then divide that by the standard deviation. In this instance, let's go ahead, get this up just a bit. So we know that mu 
So xi minus mu, so we know that xi is 120, and mu is 100, because we have that up here, right? And then we divide this by the standard deviation, which is 15, so 15 centimeters. So z is equal to 120 minus 100, and we would perform that operation first. So that would give us 20. So 120 minus 100 gives us 20. We divide that by 15. So what do we get when we divide 20 by 15? 20 divided by 15, I think, is like 1.33. Yep. So 20 divided by 15 should give us 1.33. Right. So we end up with a z value of 1.33. There. We've got a z value of 1.33, and I've got a blue pin. Let's see how that works out. So we know that 120, so if that's 115, right there, I don't know if you can really see that as blue or not. Not really. Let's try it as red. So that right there is 120, right? See what I mean? So it's slightly larger than 100 and, uh, 115, so that makes sense. And then it also would come, do some extra red lines here, so it would come down to be about right there. And so that value would be this one down here. So, and it's a positive 1.33, right? That makes sense because it's bigger than the mean. So that is how you could find a z-value if you're given a raw score. We could likewise do this for, let's say, if xi is equal to 75, what is the corresponding z-value? So we know z is equal to xi minus mu divided by sigma. So in this instance, xi is going to be 75. So that's a particular observation, right? Minus 100 divided by the standard deviation. So we have negative 25. So 75 minus 100 gives us negative 25 divided by 15 gives us uh, one and two-thirds. So I think that's, and technically this three up here should have a bar over it because it repeats to infinity, right? So, so we'll leave it at that. So here's negative 1.67. Make sure it's down here in the bottom. If we say that 75 is about right there. Seventy-five. That corresponds to negative one point six six. If we had more room, and instead of putting these circles here, we could actually put these values between negative one and negative two. So where that line is, if I had more room here, I would write one point six six right there, and over here I would write one point three three. So and remember, this would be a negative one point six six. This would be a positive one point three three. 